Good day to you. <clears throat> Hope your Christmas went well. Mine was not too bad. Definitely got the things that I needed. Um, a lot of it being van stuff. And I'll go through that in a minute. Um, is about the cupboards or the seat bases. I'm gonna make a start on those now. Anyway, goodies in a very childish manner as I say it. This is what one of my sons got me. He asked me what I want for Christmas. A switch panel. Which I'm blooming chuffed with. All daisy chained together. Some wires I'll have to snip back because it'll be separate. But that is going, if I can get it to fit, in, in that gap. Although, it's looking at those at the back, that's looking like it might not go in there. But we'll figure it out. One way or the other, we'll figure it out. That's what I, boy, that's what I wanted. It. They are rather long. If we can get away with bending them out, then I will. We might be able to. There you go, look. So... I think we can get that in there. So that's where that's possibly going, subject to it fitting. Um, so we've got that. And bearing in mind, I've already got four of these and two monitors. Another camera set up. Two cameras in there, one monitor there. But you've already seen this in a previous episode. Now you're probably saying to yourself, why on earth do you want another set of cameras? I have two cameras on the back, pinned up on the back. I would love another two more, one each side, on the side. When I was driving this down the road the other week to turn it around, I struggled. Because I couldn't see what was coming down the road and I couldn't see past. Uh, I had to take a, a leap of faith and pray that there was no one coming. And that, to me, takes the enjoyment out of driving. I want a stress-free environment when I go on holiday, if that's possible. So, what I'm doing is I'm fitting a camera here, in its own little enclosure, and I'm fitting another one here, in its own little enclosure. And the idea is, if I have to reverse out onto a road, I have those two up there, I have that one, so I can switch between monitors. But not only that, there is going to be another set of cameras going up on the roof line, so I can keep an eye on what that roof line is doing when I pull out because I have actually taken guttering out before on buildings so hopefully we will get a stress free holiday start. made up a basic frame I've also framed in underneath so I've got somewhere to bolt some oak because we're running an oak trim all the way around this I want to give you an interesting fact on knots that knot and that knot that is a live knot the reason it's a live knot is because when the tree was cut down that was a branch that was still in leaf that however is a dried out knot which is called a dead knot that branch was chopped down before the tree had fell and that branch end had died off that knot is liable and i feel it's loose it's liable to fall out whereas that one is not. Just thought I'd bring that to your attention. 16 inches high which is a standard um, dinner table dining chair height that I've got in the house. That might just give me enough height to be able to see out of that window. Okay first box is in. I've just got a support bracket to put over there. Um, believe it to be square but we'll double check everything first because I'm a little bit suspicious at the moment i think we are going to have to do some modifications wow okay we have made it a bit too small 
Um, originally the seats were going to be literally right next to each other, but never put into account that framework that I've built for the blind. And uh, that frame is in the way a little bit. You're kind of squashed up. It's not the most comfortable position. And those seats are not the best as it is. So I've decided just to give myself a little bit more room on the length. Completely lost my window with these. I knew there was going to be some issues. I knew I wanted to raise them up higher. Now I could lower them down, but... Oh, it's frustrating. Don't... They don't look out of place without the headrests, and I do get my window back. But it does mean I've got to put wood underneath everything. And uh, a piece of board there. I don't necessarily need it up here. I could have that just loosely flapping about. And then we can build up a backrest actually fixed. Which means I can then have a lid in the... A lifting lid, so I can take the cushion out and up it go. I think I'm on it now. I'm going to use this base. I've just filled in these pieces here. I'm going to run a batten in that groove, a batten across that back groove, another batten in that groove, cover the whole thing neat as I can get it with a piece of plywood, and then we're going to router out three slits so I can pass the material through and staple it over the back edges. In fact, I don't even need to keep that there. I could actually cut the ply out so I've got a hole and build that out with foam so that sits nicely on whatever it is it's got to sit on right my gamble has paid off and i've put hardwood back on sorry yeah hardwood plywood back on there's wooden battens inside that groove there there's also one at the back and i have literally spray glued the whole lot as best as i can get it and i've also left the center out so we can run the retainers through Excuse the router lines, the jigsaw snapped and I tried to router them out, but hey ho. <laughs> uh, not the greatest, but it will do the job. Um, yeah, so I succeeded. I'm just going to fill this in with foam. So that now needs a backing to screw to because that will sit on top of that one, like so. Well, we've got the oak skirty to put round, we've got carpet to lay on. Um, I have made this out of as much of the scrappy wood that's left, plywood wise anyway. It's all plied up, I'll give you an example of it. That will go in, something like that. And then this one will be screwed onto the ply behind, which will sit something like that. That's your view from behind. Bearing in mind that will be carpeted. There is a bulkhead to go in here because I want to put an arch in, but I'm now having second thoughts about this simply because of that that end that just looks too nice. Right, I've been busy today. I haven't filmed anything because I just wanted to skip straight to the next chair. <clears throat> All we've got left to do now is to strip the other two minibus seats down and uh, get a load of carpet out and glue carpet around that around the, the bases and everything but we are not gonna do that yet because I want to get on with the table right got back from being cute big sheet of this stuff really really thick has some damage on it two pieces of a two sorry <coughs> had damage on it in two places <coughs> We had a bit of a result with this. They wanted something in the region of £35 for an 8x4 sheet. I got them down to 17 quid because of the damage. And then I was very cheeky in putting it on their saws to cut out the sizes I want, avoiding the damaged parts. As I plan to cut at an angle, show you what I'm talking about not the set height it will be a little bit lower than that it gives you an idea of where this is going I'm actually planning to have it just underneath the windowsill but because we're only a single seat this side we don't need all of this area here so the plan is to cut across at an angle so if we get any guests I, I can park them here and then they can eat around there somewhere you know we've got to put some oak 
trim around it. I want to build a hollow underneath. And then somewhere along the line I've got to build something underneath it so you can put your feet up. Um, especially for my wife because she's a bit of a short girl and she needs a footrest. She doesn't like dangling feet. Unless I raise the floor height up. But I've already whacked my head on that thing four or five times already. So I don't want to raise that floor any more than it already is. But here so you get an idea of where it's heading. We'll varnish this worktop. There's a lot of little tiny eyes and branches. So it's a nice veneer for what it is. Anyway, Cut the uh, tabletop to the angles I want. I took what I think is the best of the two pieces that we had cut yesterday. Um, that's not the height it's going to be at. I'm planning on lowering that to just under the window ledge, the window um, frame area. But it gives you an idea. Now I've got to try and figure out how on earth I'm going to put this together. Well, there was me thinking this table would take a week to do, and that took me 40 minutes. Basically, a load of planking that I made up earlier, which was for the trims, which I've still got plenty of. And that's kind of what I come up with. I was going to have this a floating table, but wife expressed interest in a, a leg up, um, leg up, <laughs> a, a leg rest. So I had to put an extra leg in there so I can run a, a bar across. I've just got to find something to use for a bar. This is my table. I mean, it, it's not brilliant, but it's it's going to work. I've uh, counter sunk. I've drawn through it. I drilled through at an angle that'll catch the ply that's got to go on yeah I've got a bit of a gap there yeah a bit of a nuisance but it's all sanded back and it'll it'll work I just can't make my mind up whether to put a base on this and have that area opened up on the tabletop I think I'm uh, not quite gone the way I wanted it to go I had to um, I tried to cut a hole out neatly in the middle and it didn't work out so in the end I had to slice out on the table saw a bigger hole and instead of going on top of this wood I had to go down the side of it which changed my ways of how the underside was going but I mean that's come out quite good for what it is so we put the trim around the outside with counter sinks everywhere and then guess what happened well pretty obvious what was going to happen from the beginning when I start to sand all this trim down it was going to hit that veneer I thought, in my own mind, I knew this was going to happen. I don't know why I did it, but this is better grade plywood. It's thicker. Maybe they put thicker veneers on. Was I wrong? That top veneer is as thin as the bloody cheap stuff that they sell. This is the B&Q stuff again. So, yeah, the table has kind of gone a bit wrong. Tomorrow, I'm supposed to be routering out this centerpiece ready for a lid to insert itself in there. I uh, needed to put a bit of filler in there as well because the gap didn't quite make it. It was all hit and miss when I put this together, really. Everything started out all right and then it started to dramatically go wrong. So the top of this is rubbish.
Unfortunately, the table didn't go as well as I'd like. So what I'm going to do with that table, well I said about painting it earlier, but I think what I might do is just sand that right down until I get to that under veneer, see if I can get it even, because I'd much prefer that to be a, a light colour than a dark colour, but if we can't, then I'll just sand it straight back and mask all the oak off, and then we'll hit it with uh, some spray paint. This is where I've got it, I've sanded this down. Man, I have taken about, <coughs> excuse me, five layers of wood so much so that my screws as you can see are just starting to come through rubbish absolute rubbish that's why you buy cheap plywood best to buy the best quality because the veneer on top will be nice and thick and you can actually tackle that whereas this stuff is a nightmare anyway backs are cut i'm just waiting for some glue to turn up i'll get the gray carpet as you can see down on the floor there is a gray carpet we've got white carpet covering the other half of what needs to be covered we've left these exposed that one won't matter so much that one will so I've got a little bit of carpet to put in the middle of that one where the two seats divide um, which I'm going to save a bit of that white for a later day what else have we got going on um, blue and good clear up I've been using that hoover I've emptied that three times clearing the dust up there was a lot of it, trust me. Uh, so really, we've just got to fix the table in um, and uh, varnish that all up. We've then got to make the trim to go up around the outside edge. We've got to put a piece of oak trim across there. And we've got to put a piece for a skirt and just to cap off all of that mess down below once we've got that all done we can call this job done and i'll tell you it's been a nightmare once we've got that job done we're going to move on to that locker up there and we're going to move on to the ship's staircase in order to access the bed space up there and then uh, once those two jobs are done we'll then turn our attentions to the shower room stroke wardrobe toilet and then when that's done oh we've got a cupboard to build and then we can move on into this room the damp seems to be subsiding a little bit but we are very cold in here i keep shutting the door because the heater because we've got gaps down there um that just takes that extra effort from the heater so uh i keep drawing it I need to get some more mahogany wood as well, or um, teak, whatever you want to call it, because I need to get these trims made, and I don't really want to do them out of oak. So, there you go. So that is it now, definitely. Thank you very much for your views. Thank you very much for your shares, and I would like to wish you a happy 2021. That's what it is. It's the 1st of January today, and... Uh, it's um it's, it's all new we're going through a brexit transition we are hopefully now starting to beat this virus or or a, with the with the um oh what do you call them um oh, i've forgotten my brain's not working uh, no i've forgotten anyway hopefully the government will get get on top of all of this virus and we can get back to our lives um, normal with a bit of luck. So stay safe, people. Please stay safe. And I'll see you on the next edition. Bye-bye.